everybody. Yes, I'm back. Um, but this is what gets me aggravated. Um, did, because I was off two months, have to do a drug screen. Okay, did that last Tuesday. As soon as, and the guy that supposedly certifies you and reactivates you, he even emailed me last week asking me if I was coming back, and I said, yes, I'm going to be back Monday. So you'd think as soon as I got my drug screen results, he would have activated me on Friday so that Monday I could, if he found me something early, I could go out. Well, he didn't. And then I tell him he's going to be in at 8, and I let at my fleet manager know there's no way he'll be in at 8. He'll be in at 8.30. So I figure by the time he turn, he comes right in at 8.30, by the time he turns on his computer, does what it fiddles, screws around, it's about now. So I don't understand why it has to go to another person to activate me. To me, that should be on safety to where as soon as they get the results, they just activate me. My safety manager activates me in the system, and I'm, I'm ready. Why it has to go to another person who generally can't get in here before 8.30 and who takes his sweet time to get his day started. Now, had he been all set, the run I'm on, I could could have picked it up, did the drop and hook, picked it up, got to where I was going, well, got to close to where I was going, did my 10 hours, I got to deliver at 3.30 in Central Time in the morning, 4.30 their time, and then I have a pickup at 10 or 11 that I drop and hook, and then I'm going to Virginia for two stops. Um, that I won't really be screwed up too much, um, but again, I'm sitting now, you can't, you know, you think he'd get me a trailer, I could have already been hooked up, so as soon as he gets this guy to activate me, I could get going, but no, now I gotta wait, then he's gonna get me a, then he's gotta screw around looking for a trailer, then I gotta hook up to the trailer, go over to where I gotta do the drop and hook, do the drop and hook, and then take off. So where I didn't have to reserve a parking spot, now I'm gonna have to reserve one. Um, so that I can go right there, do that, and uh, take my eight hours off. So I need to be there by five to get my eight hours because it's about 40 minutes away from where I got to deliver. And I'm going to have, since they, Indiana's back doing construction on AE94, that's probably going to slow me up. So this is what chaffs my butt. You know, they got these, and what's funny is it's one of their dedicated accounts. You'd think they would have had it set up that all it was was a drop and hook. Um, you go there, drop and hook, then they can unload it whenever they want, and then you, you can just move on. Because then I just go straight there, do my drop and hook, and then go to the truck stop. Because supposedly they're talking about this trailer not being done till 8 or 11, so 10 my time. So I might have to go find somewhere to sit anyways. So, you know, this is what, I don't know, this is what cracks me up. That was one of the reasons I was trying to find someplace else. I wish the place I originally 
found, wouldn't have had all those things, and I could have just went there, because I would have got a fuel discount, uh, they might have had better brokers, um, and kept me running. So, when we get home, we'll try another one. Um, it's just this stuff that, you know, more administrative than it is anything else. And I hate things, again, I hate to say it, they got a pretty young office staff. And to me, if you're going to, if your start time's 8.30, you should have been in there at 8.15, got your, booted up your computer, so that by the time you got your coffee, screwed around, at 8.30, you could go to your desk and do what you needed to do. All right, we'll see you in a little bit once we get rolling. Yeah, welcome to Indiana. I went and made my drop and hook, and as usual, um, the professionalism of some of these drivers it's beyond me because freaking missing a mud flap on the uh, driver's side of the trailer. And it looks like it's been missing a while. It looks like somebody had a blowout. Whoever came out to fix it didn't bend the uh, bracket too good. Probably Mickey Mouse down a mud flap and it came off. I'm guessing it's been driven like this a while. I bet when I take pictures uh, of the back, they make sure that the mud flaps aren't uh, part of it. Because when we do our DVIRs, they have pictures to verify. This is one of our older, older trailers. This is a uh, the utility. I think it's a Dane or something. It's got the uh, matched in, yeah, the lower um, door handles that are even with your waist almost. I'll have to stop the it down and pilot doing an 8 2 split when I get there. Um, I'll see if pilot has a mud flap I can buy and some wire ties. Let's see if I can't rig up something that'll last a while till we can get back to shop. So that way I don't get aggravated. It's not like I'm the only truck out here without a mud flap on it. I've seen three already. But I'll figure out something. I'll be danged if the guy uh, I had to uh, go inside for a bit, and that's when the guy comes with the trailer. So I sat an extra 45 minutes, called, and they said that the trailer was there, so I went back and hooked up to it, but put me 45 minutes behind. But yeah, I had to, like I was saying the other, again, hey, the guy that was supposed to activate me, he should have done that last week. Because then I could have picked this up, had more than enough time to stop somewhere, have someone fix it correctly or get it semi-fixed. 
things correctly. But now I'm on a time crunch, so I can make my 4.30 a.m. point. All right, see you in a little bit. My first day didn't go too well. It was all screwed up in the morning, picked up my load, was heading down, get an hour north of Indy, and all of a sudden, um, low def warning, check engine, and triangle comes on. Then it goes off, then it goes on, then it goes off. So I pull in the rest area. So I'm only 165 miles outside the yard. I can either go to Indy, I talked to International, they said it would derate. I talked to our shop, and they said they don't think it'd be, the Cummins would be any different than the Detroit. And it would only derate me down to 55 unless I turned off tr the truck, and then it would be five miles an hour. 
Um, so I'm going to go back, drop the trailer in the yard, go over to International, or, yeah, go over to International, drop my truck there on the outside of the gate, lock it up, then go see if I can get an Uber back to my car, then take my car back to my truck and unload everything that I just loaded up, and then I'll call them in the morning. I'll just have to figure out where to put the key so they can find it and nobody else can. And, uh, We'll see how long this takes. I did a hard reset on the computer, so I'm hoping that um, it clears up enough to get me back without it derating. We'll see at 11 o'clock tonight. I'm just going to go back where the traffic's light. I'm not having to worry about bumper to bumper. And that, that way it's a clean shot all the way back to the yard, drop, go over to International, or I may just go back to my yard, drive it over to International in the morning, just won't turn it, I know, I'll take it, ho I'll take it over to International and Uber back. Worst case scenario, I'm only six miles from my car. So if I can't find an Uber, I'll just walk back. So we'll update you sometime tomorrow from home to let you know if I made it back and uh, how everything went.